All right, guys, how's it going? Today we're back with another Nomad Survival video guide. And today we're going to be doing an even more improved gem guide, basically. So this is going to be looking at a pretty consistent 100 times gemstone uh, run. This is my 10th run now, so I'm feeling pretty good about it. So right now uh, we're at 21 minutes because don't want to walk through the whole thing, basically. But uh, we'll just kind of go over everything and uh, start from the beginning. So first off... For your character, you're gonna want to go the Whisper, and this is for a multitude of reasons. Uh, the Whisper is just very, 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 very good when it comes to this third map because you can use the Whisper to pull away these specters. And I think the second one isn't the biggest deal in the world, but um, the first one is kind of not exactly like a clutch point but it's it's a more important time in the game so at this one i probably wouldn't even take too much damage from them in general but for the time being it was kind of important but character whisper whisper the fact that you are immune to projectiles right now and that you have insane hp regen when you hit enemies is the reason why you're going to play the whisper uh going on to heritage i think that nomad is always the most important heritage in these situations the reason being you just need to be able to roll for the things that you need um there's some things that i don't want to say are like specifically a hundred percent required but like they definitely help a ton. So making sure you get those, well, one of them's required, but everything other than that is pretty much fine. But yeah, so Nomad with those extra rerolls, that is just going to make the game so much easier for you. It depends way less on luck, and it's way, 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 way more consistent. So moving on to weapon skills and passives. So now for things that are 100% required, you want to make sure that you get, let's pause it real quick, Miniaturize, SP Regen, and Death Sting to max. Mostly Miniaturize and Death Sting. Other than those two, everything's more optional. In my opinion, the best, thing, uh, the best thing to do is get those two to max level. Once you get those both to max level, you're one going to be... I don't want to say one-shotting, but you're very consistently going to be doing the, uh, you know, the whole point of Death Sting is that it can kill enemies in one shot, um, kind of like the cultist special, basically. And so having that is going to make your life a lot easier. As you can see, there's a ton of mobs dying in front of me right now. Um, so <laughs> I think that's pretty important. Um, and then after you have those maxed out, I would go with, honestly, if you can every single weapon skill if, like as possible because once you get death sting maxed out the thing that's important isn't going to be like how much damage you're going to be putting out it's going to be how many things are hitting the enemies basically so you want to make sure that you have as many weapon skills going at the same time that way there's always different things hitting other enemies that's giving you the highest chance to proc that 100 percent hp uh one shot on the enemies and as long as you do that, you're you're good to go. Um, Colorless Glyph, Purifying Circle are obviously two really, really strong skills because they have pretty decent AoE. Same thing with um, Chain Light Shock. It has just decent AoE, so I would always recommend those. If you can get Relics, that's cool. If not, don't worry about it. I have only killed Crystals on this map purely like during this run purely because of the Skulls that can drop occasionally. Um, the skulls that will wipe out the whole map because those count so as long as you can maybe bank on like one of those occasionally you might be able to get yourself a couple relics because for the most part you're not going to be moving very much due to the fact that when the whisper casts you're mobile and because of that you you really only move like a couple steps a second and uh so like those chests that are up there there's also a crystal up there the odds of me being able to get over there are not very high, so I don't even bother trying, basically. Um, the only situation that is sometimes annoying is that occasionally killing the bosses is just very slow, but you don't have to worry about it because killing the boss slow doesn't matter. Um, you'll kill it eventually. I try to get it to stand somewhat close to me. That way I am able to deal damage with Purifying Glyph and or Purifying Circle and Colorless Glyph. But I mean, outside of that, I don't go out of my way to make sure it's super close. You always want to make sure you maintain some distance so that it's not hitting you. But granted, with all of the evasion, I mean, I have 80% evasion right now. And uh, that's kind of ridiculous. So yeah, weapon skills... Pretty much go whatever you want 
Um, things with large AOE is always positive, but I would say pick up as many weapon skills as you can because it's about hitting enemies, not dealing damage to them. Passives, the only ones that are required are going to be miniaturized and death sting. I think SP regen is also extremely important because then you'll be able to proc the um, whisper ability as much as often or as much as possible, and this is going to help you with your HP regen. Obviously, go ahead and pick up every other defensive passive that you see like if i'm going through and i see that like there's the hp regen or the max hp i always pick it up just because that is just securing yourself from dying basically um it's not required but it's always helpful so if i ever see them i definitely always pick them up um like right now i think i have hp regen maxed i have the armor maxed so there's no 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 bad time picking those up so that's it for Passives and weapon skills uh, pet you want to go the fox for the extra evasion um, And you'll also every time you evade skills. It's going to attack mobs. So it's just they work together very 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 well um, And then other than that you just basically I like playing right here because this spawns the enemies on this black area Right and with one of the patches uh, I believe it was before major update 4 if a mob ever dies in an area where you're not able to access, it's going to go ahead and throw that EXP closer to you. So this makes basically the EXP just a lot easier to get. Um, with the Whisper, your main spirit is able to pick up experience, but by doing this, you can basically guarantee that all the experience is going to drop on this walkway. And so this is a pretty good spot, and it's right by the Sacrificial Altar, um, if you still have to do that. But we're on to the last boss here. We'll get rid of this last boss and then I will go on to show you guys what exactly I ran basically. So like killing bosses, it's really, really slow. But the good thing about the Whisper is that you dodge projectiles while you're in your spirit form. And so all of the bosses on this map really, 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 really focus on projectiles. If you can't tell, every single boss had a projectile. So this just... It just you're gonna take a little while to kill the boss but you're not gonna die you're gonna take hardly any damage I haven't gotten a hit yet and yeah it just takes a little bit so if that's annoying I get it um, I definitely would recommend like these types of runs only for the people that are really trying to like min max their gems per hour um, for people that are just normally playing the game and you're not really too worried about getting all your gemstones as fast as possible just play however you want you'll rack them up just as fast doing anything and it's more enjoyable that way probably i don't want to say like this is very stressful um but it might be boring to some because you have to play in a very particular style and obviously everyone loves to play their own way and i totally respect that and i get it so as you can see i mean very simple and straightforward um that got us a thousand thirty three gems so colorless glyph is our number one i mean if you can get the first relic with colorless glyph, because um, you'll be able to get the boss relic chests. So if you have extra rerolls because you were already able to get what it is that you needed, I would definitely recommend getting colorless glyph uh, relic and using rerolls to get that because you just need you need the, the first one that doubles the size. And with death sting, it's a good combination. So we'll move over and take a look at exactly what I was running on that. So enemy damage, I almost never touched this one. I don't think it would be that big of a deal, but enemy damage definitely impacts how many times you're going to have to restart in the beginning. Um, because as you change this one, it definitely impacts, like, you need a luckier start, basically. You need better stores, you need better rerolls. Um, same thing with player HP. So I generally touch these two last. Player speed's not very important, so I mean, you could put this up to 100. I just like to leave it at some wiggle room so that I'm able to eventually get to those chests. Because if you put it on 100, you might not be able to get the chests, uh, even the boss ones, unless you are brave enough to bring them on top of you, basically. And sometimes that's a little dicey, but you could even put it at like 90. I've run that a couple of times. Um, and then you can move a little bit just enough to get those. So this is what I was running. Enemy speed's not that important. If anything, it kind of messes up the enemies sometimes, especially with all the walls on that map. Uh, sometimes they'll just be stuck running in circles around things. So enemy speed, 300%. Enemy HP, 500%. This one doesn't matter because our whole build revolves around Death Sting, which is going to one-shot the enemies regardless of what HP they have. So 
this might be a little impactful in the beginning but with the whisperer you have so much hp regen you're just going to be constantly hitting the enemies anyways not that big of a deal player hp you can mess around with this one as much as you want whatever you're comfortable with um i've been just trying to perfect a very simple and easy like low stress high win rate uh guide so that you know the average player can play it um if you're more comfortable playing with less hp obviously put this one up you can get an extra eight times but for the most part you don't really need to play your damage i don't really think this is really that relevant i just put it on something random basically so you can mess with this one as much as you want having it lower makes it more consistent for you to get out of the early game basically uh like with these numbers i'm able to i did, did uh 10 runs in a row right now just very consistently having no issues getting to the end game and killing that last boss and then these not really that big of a deal with the whisper and the reason being the enemy projectiles while annoying the whisper is immune to projectiles while you're in your spirit form enhance bosses again immune to projectiles when you're in wisp uh, spirit form so all of these extra aoe's that they're doing really have no impact on us and then enhanced events this is even less of a deal on this map because the specters will follow the spirit so as long as your sp regen is up very high or you bring them far away i like to keep them close to me so that i can see my hp but you could you could drag these guys all the way across the map if you want to so these three have no effect and they're each nine percent so this is a free 27 uh times multiply right here so like i said these are exactly what i ran 10 times in a row you net 1033 gems every run and so that's going to lead to just 10 runs to get 10,000 gems which is what you currently need to max out your pets um i'll just kind of briefly go over everything character wise you're going to pick the whisper reason being so you can dodge projectiles in spirit form dodge projectiles in spirit form which is impactful on the third maps bosses and you don't have to deal with the specters for these enhanced events um the other reason why the whisper is so strong is that in spirit form every enemy hit regens 10 hp that is huge that is basically how you're getting out of this early game because you're basing it off of evasion and hp regen and that's really the main reason you don't need the hp regen passive you just want to make sure you're always in contact with enemies and so i like to place my spirits on top of my character that way all the characters are just going to be or the mobs are just going to be running towards your characters. Spirits are going to hit them. It's going to keep you up in HP. Uh, Heritage, I like playing Nomad. That gives you extra rerolls because it's very important to get Evasion, Miniaturize, and Death Sting. Those are the two almost 100% requirements for this type of playthrough. Um, and having Nomad is going to help you with all those rerolls. When you don't have to reroll, you're just going to have extra rerolls for later. So it's just super helpful. In regards to passives like i said you need miniaturize and death sting those two you want to max out as fast as possible sp regen is right behind that if you ever see your store and you have sp regen don't waste a roll just grab sp regen because you want to stay in spirit form as much as possible that way you're taking as little damage as possible and regening as much as possible um, in regards to weapon skills you want to focus on getting things with large aoe but the main takeaway is that you want to be able to just hit things as often as possible it's not about how much damage you're doing it's about how many times you're hitting the enemy and having that chance to proc death sting that's the whole goal you don't you don't care how much damage you're doing like the numbers at the end of, of the uh, game that's irrelevant you just want to make sure you're hitting things as much as possible so for weapon skills colorless glyph purifying circle super duper huge because they have great aoe's but other than that just pick up everything at least to level one and then maybe pick up a couple like get fireball to level five or uh, magic missile to level five that way they can focus down the boss a little bit faster because killing the bosses takes a little bit longer you don't really have insane damage because of the way the build is but other than that, focus on grabbing everything. Don't worry about anything else. Uh, the pet, you want to go fox. That's for that extra evasion. And then the fox also hits based off when you evade skills. Or sorry, uh, projectiles and hits. So you could just sometimes when you have it all the way maxed out, you have really high evasion. The fox is just going around smacking things. Super good. And then in regards to relics, the only relic that I say like go out of your way to reroll for if you have the extra rerolls is going to be purifying circle and that's because it doubles the size so that's 
that's going to be huge. That makes it so much larger, as you saw at the end. I had my whole screen covered, so mobs were constantly being propped by colorless glyph, and that's going to, every single time it goes off, have a chance to one-shot them, and that's super duper huge. In regards to the map mechanics, the crystals, you don't have to get rid of them. Um, it's not very important. It's really not that big of a deal. It gives them more HP, but the more HP they have doesn't matter because you're really focusing on one-shotting them with Death Sting. So if you can get them, cool. If not, don't worry about it. I sometimes make my way towards them so I can get the relics, but other than that, not that big of a deal. The specters are even less of a problem because the Whisperer's ability actually drags them away. Also, since they're technically classified as projectiles, while you're in spirit form, they can't damage you. So, all around, it's a good time. The only reason I would not leave them on top of you is because once you're out of spirit form, they'll all hit you at the same time. With the enhanced events, there's about 15 of them, I think, on the map. So all 15 of them hitting you for the like one or two seconds in between your casts are going to do a lot of damage. So don't even risk it. Just drag them even just five steps away from you. So that's all you need to do in regards to the map mechanics. And then bosses, the bosses really have no impact on you, honestly. Uh, they all revolve around projectiles, the first boss projectiles just kill him slowly second boss it's the the giant pig orc king i don't know if you, what you want to call him uh who summons the pig riders super cool boss but they're all projectiles so not that big of a deal third boss those flames count as again projectiles so you don't really have to worry about them you just have to kill them eventually and then the third boss is just a or sorry the fourth boss is accumulation of all those things so it's very very simple to kill it just takes a little while um and then here are the modifiers that i ran for this hundred times this comes out to around 1,038, 33 gems, so it takes 10 runs to max out your gems for the time being, but like Fox said, in the future, gemstones are going to be used to purchase other items, so you're going to be wanting to farm as much as possible. Um, so that is about it. Um, this is definitely one of the most consistent ways I've found to get gems. It's a very stress-free, easy run. So if you like it, let me know down below. Go ahead and drop a like and a subscribe. And as always, I appreciate all the support, guys. And I will see you on the next one.